Hi guys, and welcome to the DreadFX Custom Paint Beginners Classes. Hi guys, and welcome back to another airbrush video. This one is airbrushing for beginners paint effects. So I'm going to take you for a little mini series on some paint effects guys and the first one today is going to be a brushed steel, we're going to do logos, we're going to do rivets, we're going to do some pin lining, so it's a full day guys on this. The piece we're going to use today is a side panel, like what you see in the background there, I've got a couple of Harley ones I've done in candy, so this is prepped in 2K primer and I've flatted this back in 500 grit ready for today. The bits we're going to be using today guys is a bit of plain white paper when I'm masking off, inch masking tape, we're going to be using some green fine line as well, this is a 3mm fine line, we've got two pre-cut Harley stencils in case we muck one up as you do, so we'll be using them, you'll need a grey scotch bright, a circle stencil like that so it's got all different size circles in there you can spray through we're going to be using some white paint pens a scalpel the paints we're going to use is a ford moon dust silver this is a solvent based coat and we've got an alpha and mayo this is like a bronzy red color metallic so we're going to use a bit of that as well we've got a dark gray mix which is the golden, so these are water base. We've got a black transparent, we've got a titanium white, a shading gray, a carbon black. So they're the paints we're going to use. Cleaning products is going to be thinners and water for flushing through the color changes on the water base today. The spray guns that we're going to be using, I'm going to use the PS290 by Creos. So we're going to use that one for dropping the base coats down and then detailed work and things like that. We're going to use the PS270. I've also got a bottom feed, the Iron Water Eclipse, the B HP BCS 0.15. So we can use that one as well if we need to. So I've got all the bits set up. The first stage I'm going to take you through, we're going to get this side panel half tank and we're gonna get it based up in silver. So I'll see you in the next step, guys. Right, it's a bit noisy, guys, because I've got the extractor on, so I can talk to you without a mass, so just for straight out. The first thing you wanna do when you've got your panel prepped, get some degreaser, go over it like that, and then just give it a wipe down, hands a bit, and just give that a good clean down, like that. And then once you've cleaned it down, rough your airline up. I'm just going to use the eye water airbrush as a blower. Get a tank rag. And then just blow off any dust. Like that. And then you're ready to start your base coat, guys. So I'm just going to use the PS290. But we're just aiming to get quite good coverage because we're doing brush steel I don't mind if some of the primer base is underneath that in the colour so just do a nice pass and just work your way around This brush does cover quite well. That's gone off really quick guys. So we've got another coat on.
and that'll do guys that'll do for a base for what we're going to need today that's more than enough down for the brush steel so we'll let that dry and i'll see you in the next step right guys we're ready to move on to the next stage as you've seen in that last clip we've sprayed this in the ford moon dust silver so that's nice and dry to work with now i've mounted it to a bit of a bottom of a box so it's just slightly off the table i've mixed up some transparent shade and grey we've got that in the cup and we're basically just going to do a pass over this and give this a coat of the shading grey uh, you've not got to worry about how you put it down it's not going to be a full coat we're literally just going to go in like that and just dust some shading grey on this like that so it can go on rough you're not aiming to get a full coverage on this you're just aiming to get some paint down so if it's going down wet don't worry going down and spit it, it doesn't matter so I'm just doing this in line passes so that's the shade and grey down So that water base is still wet, as you can see there, I've just smudged it. So just let that go off for a second. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your Scotch-Brite, the edge of the Scotch-Brite, and you are just gonna run the Scotch-Brite over the wet paint. You can do this when it's slightly dry, so I'm just going for this effect when it's slightly wet. You can just take the paint off a little bit easier. And try and keep it in one direction. No pun intended. <laughs> and just drag that paint across the silver. Like that. I'll drop a little bit more on here and you can just keep working this guys if it goes through too much you can just drop another bit on like that you just work your way around your panel nice and easy just drag that through and you can just keep building the layers up I hope that camera's picking all of that up for you so just dragging that through like so little bit more here and there. just getting get an even pattern that's what you're aiming for that texture on it and 
Bỏ ra And you can keep scratching this back and just bringing that silver through And then once you clear coat this guys It just the silver pops through so you get the shine from the silver and then you get this textured effect on the top so that's what you're aiming for is that steel type look that you get like that now what you can do as well you can go over with a black over the top of the shading grey and dust a bit of black over and then do the same again and you can just start building the layers and just giving it a bit more depth if you do that but I'm, I'm going to go with that so we'll let that dry and I'll see you in the next step right guys we're moving on to the next stage now we've dropped the shading grey down let that dry the water base and now we're going to move on to the fine line Right guys, we're moving on to the fine line. So we've got the panel here. We're going to use the three three mil fine line. And I'm just going to put a band around this. So that's the first pass of fine line. And what I want to do is because I want to put that, I want that where that first piece is that's where I want the colour so I'm just going to come in on that fine line and go round again so you're just putting that other bit of fine line up to that one Like that. And just chop that back. Just get that one leveled up. Like that. And then we're going to drop another one. This side of the fine line. like that just cut that one back and then look for your start on the centre one we'll peel that one out like that and that's the bit we're going to spray in guys we're going to spray that piece there so just press your fine line down and now what we've got to do is we've just got to mask off this side and we'll mask off this side. But before we do that, we're going to drop the Harley logo on and that's going to go on here. So this is a pre-cut stencil. These are quite old. That's why I grabbed two. Very old. Need to check that. And we're just going to drop that on there. Like that. And then what you'll do is you will peel this piece off like that and then you just take out
this piece can be quite fiddly. Just stick it. So that's that bit out guys. So you'll end up with that. And then what we need to do is we just need to mask off round here and then this outer piece there. So I've just got some standard paper and we're gonna use some inch masking tape. So I'm just going to run a bit of the inch masking off the edge of this round here. As you can see, you're just going onto that fine line like that. So that's your first pass of masking. Now we're going to just go on the inside and work our way around. A little bit fiddly, but you'll soon you'll soon get the hang of it if you've not done this before. So that's that piece. Now we're just going to get some paper and just mask out this. When you do this just make sure you've got no gaps like pieces like that just make sure you mask them up because when you spray in you can get the paint can go underneath should do for the inside piece and then just check your line so you've not gone over anywhere with the masking that seems okay right, I'm just going to run a piece around this bottom edge and create like a little curtain around the bottom so you should now have something that looks like that so you're all masked off you've masked the pin line out so now we can go in paint this we can paint the holly logo and then that's then bits done so I'll set you up back over there We'll get the extractor on because we've got a little bit of solvent to drop in on this. I'll see you in the next step, guys. Right, a little bit noisy again. I'm set up, we've got the PS290 again, and we've dropped some of the Alpha and Mayo base coat in this. And basically, all you're going to be doing is, guys, just doing a light pass. Check the paint's coming out. Nice light pass over the top. Like that. And just build it up. That'll do for a pass. Throw a bit of air over that just to dry it down quicker. I'm 
just going for another pass on that, start to darken it on. And this is nice because in that pin line there you can still see the texture of the brush steel effect underneath. Because I'm not going that dark with this paint, just dusting it on. Dropping a bit of air over there. Just going to have to flash off quicker. I'm going to go with that guys, that's enough on there. You can still see that texture coming through on that pin line which looks quite nice. So let this dry off and I'll see you in the next step. Right guys, we've let that go off for a bit. So in this stage, you're now ready to demask it. So just, you put the masking on, just take it off nice and carefully. to the rivet stage and this is going to be really awkward to film because I want to try and get the best angle I can for you on this and this is really fiddly to hold it really wants to be sitting flat but I need to be holding this and working right around so you've got a circle cutouts in this this is dense plastic I did have a flexible one but I can't find it so I'm going to use this you can get some circular things cut out say on masking or something like that, which would be a lot easier. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that against the side of the tank panel and then we're going to go in with the black and we're going to do some black dots all the way around. Let the black go off, then position that back up and then I'm going to drop some white in the brush well, like a grey mix, we're going to go for the dark grey. We'll use the dark grey. And I'm just going to dust over with a bit of dark grey. So you go back over again. Dust over with the dark grey. Then we'll go back onto the black. And then this is where your dot technique will come in handy, guys. Go to the centre of them circles and then where it's on the, on the centre of the grey and just drop a tiny black dot on each one as we work round. So I'll take you through this process. I'll try and do it at this angle and work round. Probably have to do something like that. It's gonna be a bit fiddly. So we'll give this a go. Hook the Creo up. So we're gonna use the PS270 for this. Running about similar sort of pressures as we've done in the previous videos. About 25. Go for a bit of carbon black in your brush. I'm just going to get a piece of paper and just do a little test. So that's spraying okay at that. And just work your way around. Doing some black dots. So you are aiming that's picking that up you can see the dot on there you're just aiming to go round all the way around the edge dropping in black dots and what we're going to do is I'm just going to mask off the other holes so there's no overspray so we're going to be using that one I'm just going to mask out the other holes 
just to stop that overspray going through. That's that. So we'll just work round. And if you want as well, which is a good idea, get a paint pen and just do a little X on your panel where you want these to go. So you can line your, if you've done what I've just done and you've just masked off, it's hard to know where you're going and your rivets could be out of line. So just nip round with a white paint pen and just put some markers down where you want these to go. Like that. Just gives you that guide then. So you can line the hole up, put this little cross in the centre of the hole and then you're good to go. Like that, one there, and we'll go one there. So that's a guide. So now you can just go round, line your stencil up, and just work your way around the piece. There's a lot of ways of doing rivets, but this is the way I like to do them because they look more realistic. Um, you'll see if we go on. So just work your way around the panel. is fiddly on this. It's a lot easier if you can get these cut out in like a mask form and you can just stick the mask on. them down so you have got now your first pass all the way around that's your first stage of the rivets now what you can do to give this more of an effect you can just do a little drop shadow so go up to the rivet and just dust lightly underneath like that and when you're looking at your panel if your panel's going to be sitting like that just remember to keep your drop shadow to the bottom of each one
So these would go here. So you've just got a teeny drop shadow to the bottoms of each of them rivets. So we'll let that go off for a minute. Just clean the brush out. A little bit of water. And then we'll go in with the grey mix. And then you're gonna do the same again. You're gonna go back round with the stencil over the top of the black dots and you're just gonna dust a bit of grey mix. Now because I've got a bit of black left in there, I'm just gonna drop a bit of carbon white, a bit yeah, a bit of titanium white in with the carbon black. We'll just give that a look, see what it's like. And that's the sort of grey you're looking for, is that mixer grey there. So it's quite a dark grey, we can lighten that up just a teeny bit. Just give it a back mix. I'll just check that again. That's a better grey. So you're looking for that lightish grey. Get your stencil again and go back round. Line your dot on. And just put a dusting over. Over the dot. So you go round again and you just lining up and dusting over that dot So that's that pass done guys, so you've now got something that looks like that with your dots, if that's picking that up. So you've got like that, that first pass of rivet, you've got a little drop shadow to the underneath. We'll just let that go off a minute. So we're done with that stencil now, we don't need that. The next pieces you're going to need is going to be paint pen, your scalpel, we're going to need some carbon black, so a little blast through and clean your brush. Just a quick back flush. Drop yourself a little bit of carbon black in. Get your test paper. That's glowing nice. Just going to knock the pressure down slightly. And now what we're aiming to do is is to use your dot technique and just drop a dot to the centre of all them going round. Like that. So that's that done guys, so now you should end up with something that looks like that with all the dots on going round. Yep, so you've got that to that stage. 
The next step to do is, again, if your panel is like this, and that's how you'd hang it up, just think of a light source. If the light source on this panel is coming from this way, your highlights on these little dots would be to the bottoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the paint pen and we're going to drop a tiny little highlight in like a half moon. So you're aiming for, if that's picking that up, do you see that little scallop? I'll do a bigger version of it. You're aiming to do that like a little smiley in that tiny dot just at the bottom work your way around and you are just aiming to do that if that's picking that up you'll see that little skull up there and that gives it that 3D look like it's a hole like you'd see in a pot rivet. So just go around, drop in them little highlights. To the bottom of the black dot. So you've got that effect. So now that's giving it another 3D type look. If that's picking that up. So you've got that nice rivet look there. Now if you want to pop these rivets out more, get your scalpel. Really should have put my glasses on because it's hard to see. And what you're aiming to do is scratch so you're going through the silver and you're hitting the primer and just scratch round the top of each rivet. Just on the tops like this and just remember that your light source is coming from the top so this is where that light source would be reflecting and be hitting that top edge You're basically just going around the top of the rivet like that around the top And that's get it that see that rivet now it pops now how it pops out if that's pick, that camera's picking that up you've got your highlight to the bottom here you've got your highlight to the top so that gives it that nice sharp edge and it just makes that rivet pop off the panel if you want to make them pop a little bit more get your airbrush again And this is where you'll do your tiny dagger stroke. Just 
get that little flush back through. And then get yourself some titanium white and just drop, just check your paint flow. Drop a little bit of white on the top edge of the rivet. This needs thinning down. You'll find opaque white no matter what white you use. They are thick. That's better. So you're aiming just to put a little highlight where you've just done the scratch back, come in slightly. And drop a highlight just behind that scratch back that you've done. That's made it pop again, so it gives you that nice 3D rivet look on that. So I'll move on to the next stage, guys, and I'll show you a bit more textures. Right, so we've got all the rivets down. So you should have it looking like that. So you've got all your 3D rivets, you've dropped a highlight to the top. A little scallop where the dot is, scratch back technique on the top. So that's made them really, really pop now, guys. So the next stage I want to do is just want to move on and then do a little bit of texture. We'll drop some shading and just do a little bit of shading. I'll do a little bit of a rust technique for you so you can see a little bit of rust. So I'll move on to that stage. So clean your brush out. And I've got a little bit of this. If you've got your golden kit, you'll get that in there with it. Drop a bit of that in. A little bit of shading grey. Back mix it. And that should give you a colour. Sort of like that. And we'll do a little bit of rust effect on here and what you're doing is what you're aiming to do is
is just come off it like that. So do a little build up and like a light dagger stroke coming down. Do some passes like that. You can also do dot patterns. So do a first pass like this. Build it up. Do some more there. Do some little dots like it's rusting through. Do some there, uh, rusty piece. A little bit up here, a little pin line. So go over it with a pass like that. Just random. Some little dots. Like that. Get some carbon black. Drop a bit of carbon black in with that. Back mix it. Now I'll give you a dirty sort of colour Then drop that on the inside of the other piece This is just a basic, quick show you on how you can get like a rust effect guys. You can spend, and I have spent lots of time doing this before, and get this really realistic. But this will just give you a quick look into what you can do and what you can achieve. So you've gone for like a You've gone for your carbon black mixing with that. So you've got a bit of that brown colour, dropped a bit of carbon black in, mixed it up with it, and now you're just going over, dropping some dots, little squiggles and lines. Like that, a little bit. To do all that and make it look a bit beaten up, drop your black over. Like that. Drop a few lines in. And then now what you can do is, if you really want to make this pop, as you did with the scratch technique on the top of the rivets, go to your black edge and then just slightly scratch through like that on that bottom edge, only on them bottom edges, like that, a bit on there, like that. And this will make it look like it's a hole actually in the tank and give it that 3D look. So just on that bottom edge. Like that. And then little ones there. And on here you'd be aiming to go like that, just on them where it's the top of that. Same here. Just do some jagged lines like that. 
these would be holes, so just do a little bit there. You're basically just taking that little bit of paint away. And it gives it that, like it's an actual hole in the steel. So you've got that effect, if that's picking that up. So you've got, you're scratching along the bottom edge of that and that just gives it that really realistic look as though it's like burnt through and there's a hole. So that's the end of the video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. On this part one of the paint effects. So this is the brush steel. I've got a load more of these panels. So I'll do all the paint effect videos and we'll use these. The next one we're going to do, I'll do denim. So we're going to do a denim look. So we'll do, I've got like a round one. So we'll do a pocket. We'll do the little Levi's logo. And we'll drop that in and I'll show you how to do denim jeans. We'll do a wood grain one. Going to do a marble candy one for you as well. So that's today's video on the brush steel with the Harley logo. We've just done showing you the pin line and then shows you how you can get the rivets and put some textures into your piece. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe, press that notification so you can don't miss, so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos on DreadFX Custom Paint. And I will see you in Paint Effects Part 2. Thanks for watching, guys.